Miss Agnes here. I have missed you guys, but I'm so excited because each Tuesday we're going to touch base. I am going to do um, some drawing lessons each week that you can follow along at home. You don't need any fancy art supplies, any piece of paper, a pen, yes, a pencil. I know we don't use pencil a lot in my class, but I'll let you use pencil at home. So whatever drawing material that you have and any old piece of paper, we're gonna work on our drawing skills each week. So um, adults, if you're watching this, I will be posting a couple different lessons each week that are geared towards different age groups. And so, um, but of course, kiddos can do all the lessons or just choose the one that's geared toward their age. It's really up to you guys. And like I said, you don't need any fancy materials at home. I'm just gonna do the drawing. And then whatever you've got at home, if you wanna take it um, another step and you wanna color it in with your colored pencils or your crayons or your markers, whatever you have at home, that's great too. But what I really want us to focus on is continuing our drawing skills, just like we've practiced, or just like we've talked about each week in class. Drawing is a skill just like any other skill, just like playing the piano, just like riding your bike, playing football. You gotta practice to get better. So um, that's why we're gonna work on that each week to continue your drawing skills, okay? So this lesson that we're gonna start with, this is really geared toward my fourth and fifth graders. This crocodile we were doing in third grade, right before spring break, and I promised a lot of you that we would do it when we got back. A lot of you fourth and fifth graders really wanted to try out this cool crocodile. So that's what we'll do now. And then um, the next lesson will be geared towards younger kids, okay, adults? So, but of course, if you're a second grader and you wanna try this, if you're a first grader and you love to draw and you wanna try it, try it, guys. It's art, right? You know there's no right or wrong, good or bad, so you might as well just try it if you want to, okay? So, we're gonna start, just like always, guys, you're gonna want your paper, and look at this drawing. He's, he's not floating, he's not flying, right? He's kind of, uh, his body's sort of curved up. It almost looks like he's about to attack, or he's about to go in the water, and his body's just kind of curved. So, I suggest you have your paper up and down tall today, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Like I said, you can use pencil, Miss Adams will let you use pencil this time, pen, any drawing material that you have around the house, and any piece of paper. If you just have lined notebook paper even, that's fine. Use whatever you can find. Now, my challenge to you fourth and fifth graders, you know what I'm gonna say. If you're using pencil, don't spend the whole time erasing it and trying to make it perfect. My challenge is that you um, go ahead and draw the whole thing without one erase mark. Let's see if you can do it. Let's see, okay, so you're gonna start not in the middle of your paper, look. His eyeball is more towards the bottom because of the way his body is curving. So you're gonna look more towards the bottom of your paper somewhere. And I wouldn't necessarily start in the middle, you might wanna move it over just a little bit to give you some more room on the side for his body, but it's up to you. We're gonna start with his eyeball. I would go very small for his eye eyeball so that you have plenty of room to fit him on the paper, okay? So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna decide where I want my eye to go. Just start with a little curve line, just like always guys, just like art class with Miss Adams. Start with this eye, a little curve line, and then we're gonna make a curve line underneath, and you can fill it in solid. Well, I actually leave a little space of paper showing, just like we talk about in art class when we're drawing something that's alive, you wanna leave that little space of white showing, because he's alive, so his eye is wet, so there's always a reflection off of his eye, okay? So, then we're gonna make the ridge over his eyeball. Now, crocodiles, they sit in the water and their body will be covered in the water, but their eyes are sticking up out of the water so that they can look and look and wait, and they're waiting for, you know, the zebra or the wildebeest or whatever poor little animals come into the water to get a drink, he sees them coming because his eyes sticking up out of the water. Lunch, okay? So we've got that ridge over his eye that's sticking up out of the water. Now we're gonna go ahead and make a curve line that kind of comes back and curves forward. For it's, it's like this big muscle in his jaw. They of course have to be really, really powerful. Their jaws have to be really strong because a big old zebra, that's pretty hard to take down. He's got to have very strong jaws to clamp on and hold on tight. So we're going to go ahead and draw that big muscle coming back, and we're going to swing it forward. So I'm going to start here. It's going to curve back, 
and it's going to curve forward and stop right underneath, okay? Now, for his jaws, we're going to go ahead and bring it forward a ways. Crocodiles, of course, guys, have those long jaws. That's what they're famous for. So don't make a little short mouth coming forward. You're going to want long jaws coming forward. And as you can see, it's not a smooth line like our jaw. It sort of has a wave to it. So you're going to start here, right where we ended, and I'm going to go ahead and make it curve forward however long you want his big old crocodile jaws to be. Then I'm going to make this curve line that comes up a little ways, just a little ways. It's going to swing up, it's going to curve up, and on the tip of his, this is where his nose is, on that tip is where his nostril is. So his nostril also sits above the water because crocodiles spend a lot of time in the water, but they're not fish. They still have to breathe. So as he sunk his body down and he's waiting for that zebra or he's waiting for that wildebeest, his nostril is also sticking up out of the water so that he can still breathe. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that little tiny curve line on the end. And inside that little curve line, I'm gonna make a dot, fill it in solid for a dot for his nostril, okay? Now, we're gonna go ahead and make it curve over and it's gonna stop when it reaches the eye. When it's across from the eye, we're gonna stop. But it's kind of bumpy because of course, he's a reptile and his skin is not smooth, soft like ours. It's rough and bumpy. There's that texture, okay, rough, bumpy texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort of start to slant it. It's just gonna be not perfect, kind of rough and bumpy. And when, when it gets across from the eye, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. So I stopped it across from the eye, and then because his eyeballs are sitting on top of his head, you can see that ridge on the top for um, the other eye on the other side of his head. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another curve line right across from this side. It's gonna be another curve line bump right there, okay? Now, just to finish off uh, this little part of his body right here, I'm gonna make a little bit of a smooth line that starts to curve back and up. So wherever I stopped, I'm gonna make another smooth line that kind of curves back and up, and then I'm gonna stop right there, okay? Now, of course, he needs big, strong, powerful, tooth-filled jaws, right? This is a crocodile. So we're gonna go ahead Look at this curve line that we had for that jaw muscle right here. We're going to start towards the back of that curve line, and I am going to make it slant down for his open jaws. And guys, you want some room here. Don't just barely slant it and stop. You want, you want some good space right here. So I'm going to bring it down, and then I'm going to go ahead and make another wavy line forward for his open jaws. Now, I know it looks really wide and big right now, and it should. Okay, because we're going to fill that in, don't you worry. There's going to be plenty of teeth filling in that space. Then, on the bottom, his lower jaw is going to look a little skinnier, so we're not going to do it as wide as the top. We're just going to make a little curve line down. And the bottom part of his jaw is a little bit more smooth, like where it starts to um, connect to his neck. It's a little bit more smooth, so I'm going to go ahead and make a curve line back. Okay, and then for, again, that big muscle back here, I'm gonna make it curve up and stop. Now, right now we've got a poor toothless crocodile. That's not gonna work, we need to add in his teeth. So nobody is taking a crocodile to the dentist, guys. They're gonna be, you know, some bigger, some smaller, kind of crooked, kind of gnarly looking. So you're gonna just start with your teeth and really the, the less perfect they are, the more realistic it's gonna look, okay? They don't have just perfect triangles all the way back, okay? So you want some kind of jagged and crooked, some smaller, some bigger, but you're gonna fill in, take your time and fill in that top row, pointing down, lots of angles pointing down. And then you'll fill in the bottom row, same thing, only this time we're gonna make those angle lines pointing up, some kind of crooked, some smaller, some bigger. I'm gonna take my time and fill in that bottom row of teeth. Now, 
you are going to see his mouth is open so wide. You're going to see the other side of his jaw. You're going to see a little bit of that other side. So on the very tip of the end of his jaw, I'm going to go ahead and start to curve it in. Now watch, it's going to curve in on the inside, that open part. And I'm just going to start to curve it up a little bit. And look, it's just going to kind of disappear. Wherever it disappears is fine. And on that, we're going to go ahead and make another row of teeth, sticking up, because this is the other side of the bottom of his jaw. And his mouth is open so wide that you might even see a little bit of this, you might double this line right here to show that muscle. And you might even see his tongue, a little bit of the bottom of his tongue. So we're just gonna go ahead and make it curve down and look, it doesn't quite touch. And then not at the end of this line, but up a little ways, I'm going to go ahead and make a curved line down and touch. Okay, so we've got our big crocodile face. Now we're going to go ahead and start in on his leg. First, we're going to show just a little bit of like his throat right here. So not at the top of this line that we have right here. I'm going to come down and I'm just going to start to curve up just a little short line to show just a little bit of his throat. Then we're going to make his legs. Now they've got kind of short, squatty legs, um, excellent for swimming, of course, that's where they spend most of their time, but they're also, they're pretty fast on land, not for a long ways, but for short distances, they're pretty quick when they're on land. So we're gonna go ahead and make his short little stocky leg. So we're not, he's not like a long, tall giraffe leg, they're really short, okay? So I'm gonna look at this line, not at the end of this line, but down a little ways, and I'm just gonna make a curved line that comes up, back down, don't touch. Then we're gonna slant it forward. So you can start at the end of the sign or you could even bring it over just a little ways and I'm just gonna make another curve line that comes forward and down. And I'm gonna make another curve line that comes in. Now look, sort of like our wrists get skinnier, they're wider here and then they get skinnier at the wrist, so does his, okay? So we're gonna make it get a little skinnier and then I'm gonna make, he's got four toes. Nobody's gonna to count your croc toes. If you only have room for three or if you want five, do it. So you can make, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of gnarling, kind of not perfect looking, kind of out and back in, don't touch. Out, back in, don't touch. Out, back in, don't touch. Looks like I have room for four, but maybe you only have room for three. That's fine. Make it how you want. Now, We've got his, we've got his kind of throat started. This is the line that we're gonna look at. We're gonna stop, jump over his leg, and this is, guys, where his body really starts to curve up. So, I've stopped right here, I'm gonna jump over, and I'm gonna start to curve my body more up. Okay, so, we're gonna start here, jump over, curve my body up, okay? For his back leg, his back leg is shaped a little bit different, just like a lot of animals. His back, um, his hind legs have a little bit bigger muscles. They're shaped a little bit bigger and they give them a little bit more power in the water. So his back leg is shaped just a little different. I'm gonna start with more like a wide U. So I'm gonna make, looking at this line, I'm gonna make a U, kind of a wide U that touches that line. Look, if I need to make mine longer, make it longer but you're gonna draw kind of a U. And then we're gonna go ahead and swing it around. Now watch, this is where you need to pay attention. I'm gonna swing it over the top, but look, it doesn't touch, guys. See how it goes around? So it, I, we have that U. Now I'm gonna swing it around. It's not touching the end of the U, okay? It doesn't quite touch. So we've got his foot already started here. I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna make another uh, curve line that sticks out. In between here, we're gonna make his little toes. And they're a little shorter, they're not quite as long, so we're gonna go ahead and make, I have room for four, you might only have room for three, no biggie. Whatever you have room for is fine. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start to make his tail. So, he, we have his belly, we're gonna go ahead and make his tail by stopping, jumping over, and look, we're just gonna curve it even more around. This makes for a really interesting 
composition. We use that word all the time where things are located and um, where they're placed on your paper. This makes for a little bit more of an interesting composition than just like a crocodile, a long crocodile on your long page. This is just kind of something, something different for you older kids. So we've got the tail swishing around there. It definitely looks um, like he's moving. It gives it more movement than just a crocodile standing there, right? So we've got his tail swishing around. It's whipping around. Now we're going to jump back down to the back of his head. And this is where I'm going to start the ridges for his body. The crocodile has ridges all along his body. Again, not smooth skin at all. On his back, especially, he has these big bony, they kind of look like um, armor. So we're going to go ahead and make little curve lines that follow the curve of his body up. Now listen, this is where you really have to look. We're going to make this series of curve lines and it's following that curve that we've started. You're not just going to make curve lines coming up, straight up. You're going to make curve lines that follow that curve to his body. So I'm going to start here and taking my time, I'm going to follow that curve we've already got to his body and I'm just going to continue that and it's going to stop right above, right across from his leg. That's when you know when to stop. And then we're gonna go ahead, this is what's gonna really make it very a very realistic drawing, is you're gonna switch. So I, I've made curves going this way. Right here is where his tail really starts to twist. So I'm gonna switch the curve lines. They were going this way now. I'm gonna twist them and switch them and now they're gonna go the other way. And I'm just gonna follow that curve of his tail and look, as it gets um, closer to the tip of his tail, we're just gonna let them get smaller and smaller and they kind of disappear, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side, the other side of the ridges on his back. Right above this front leg is where we know we're gonna start him. So right above this front leg, I'm gonna make another series of curved lines that again, it follows the curve of his body. We're gonna get that nice movement. I'm going to stop again, stop wherever you stopped this first row. We're going to stop right here. Then we're going to switch directions for our curve lines. I'm going to make that switch and I'm going to start to make them go this way. And look, as it starts to get closer to the tip of the tail, again, they just kind of disappear smaller and smaller and smaller and they disappear. Now, oh, before I forget, because just ask their graders, I'd always forget. We're going to make the other legs on the other side of his body. So I'm going to look at this leg. I'm going to stop, jump over his body. I'm going to make a curved line on this side. I'm going to look at his back leg. I'm going to stop, jump over his body. Curved line for that bigger back leg on the other side. So now he's got one, two, three, four legs, even though you can't really see these two legs. So now we are going to go ahead and start to really add in the detail, the design, make it really interesting and fun to look at. The thing with the crocodiles, guys, is that they are covered in scales, covered in pattern, um, that repetition, repeating shapes, repeating lines. So, but it makes it really kind of cool to look at. Let's start with his belly. His belly, a real life crocodile, he has um, a belly that's a, it's a little smoother. It's not like as rough and bumpy. It's a little smoother looking. And those scales look different than the ones on his back. They're more almost rectangular, sort of, sort of curved or rectangular shaped along his belly. So we're gonna look at this jawline that we had and just down a little bit, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna make a curve line that stops, jumps over, stops, jumps over all the way until it disappears on the tail. We've just curved it all the way across, okay? Then I'm gonna make another row a little bit below that line that we just made. We can add another row, stopping and jumping over all the way, letting it disappear. And then to make it sort of that more rectangular shaped uh, belly, belly curve lines, we're just gonna go ahead and make little curve lines in between the ones that we just created. Just kind of stagger them. They don't have to, which means they don't line up perfectly. 
just here and there. We're just going to make little curve lines that sort of follow all the way. So that's the scales that are on his belly. On his back, you have this big wide area. Well, he doesn't just have two rows of those scales along his back, those ridges. He's got several, okay? His back is completely covered. So we're going to make another couple rows on the inside for, on his back. Now, if you only have room for like two rows, that's fine. If you have a really wide back and you have room, room for 10 rows, just make however many that you have room for. But all I'm gonna do to start that, they're gonna be even a little bit different. So to start that, right next to his back, I'm just gonna make a curve line, straight line underneath. Curve line, straight line underneath. Curve line, straight line underneath. And I'm gonna follow that curve line, straight line pattern all the way back. And they're gonna, again, they're gonna to start to get smaller. I have room for another row, so I'll do that again. Curve line, straight line. And again, notice how I'm curving it with this body and following that curve. And take your time. I have room for another row. You might only have room for two rows. You might have room for several more rows. But I went ahead, I have room for another row, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my next row. Now look, I've kind of stopped at this point. This is where you can really start to make almost more like oval or teardrop shape or just little, little tiny curve lines and see, they're just gonna to start to get tinier and tinier as you go back and just let them disappear. Starting to come together, isn't he? Now, we are gonna do even different scaling, even different patterning on his legs, okay? His legs are covered with more um, scales that are sort of, they look more tightly put together. They're overlapping a little bit. So um, you don't see the full scale. It's not like perfect polka dots that you see. They're kind of laying on top of each other really tightly packed together. So let's just start with this front leg that's closest to you. And you can, guys, you can make curve lines like this. So hold on, let me show you before you start. Curve lines like this that sort of lay on top of each other. Maybe you wanna make more wide, almost, you know, sort of squared off pattern like this one, sort of like shingles on a roof. You could do that. Or of course, if you have a different pattern in mind, do whatever pattern you want. So we're gonna go ahead though and take our time and really fill in his legs with this pattern. Follow the way his leg goes. So notice how I'm, I'm curving it forward. I'm following that pattern or that the angle of his leg with my pattern. I'm following it, taking my time. Guys, with these, uh, with these scales especially, if you rush through and you go like this, it's gonna look very scribbly. So this is when you really, just like we always talk about, take your time, don't get in a rush. That's the great thing about these videos. You can pause and fill in and then push start whenever you're ready. So I'm gonna do this leg, this leg. Don't forget these two legs. I always seem to. Don't forget to fill in those tightly packed scales on this leg. And this leg, and of course, Miss Adams, is not, I'm not making my art, so I'm gonna go real quick just to show you. Okay, so we've got a cocktail. If you want to add any other scaling pattern, like on a space, if you wanted to show, you know, some little um, clusters of scales, we've talked about this before, you don't have to cover every centimeter of a space, but if you wanna show just some scales here and there, you could absolutely do that. Think about some background maybe. Crocodiles are almost always uh, close to the water. He doesn't have to be in the water. Maybe you just see, um, maybe he's about to go into the water to do some hunting or something. I could just see just a little, a little uh, bit of water line right there. You could add some plants if you wanted to, some nice tall grasses. Of course, nobody is gonna be mowing the yard where this crocodile lives, so they might get really wild and tall grasses. I could do some rocks. We've done rocks a million times. You can make kind of a bumpy line with a curve on the top here and there just to show some rocks. 
Um, you, oh, cattails are a plant that often grows close to water. So if you wanted to show some cattails, those are the plants that are kind of a long curve line with a skinny smush circle at the top and a straight line. So I could definitely add and add some leaves or things next to my cattails. Show some waves in the water. You guys know we've done this kind of background before. So really take your time and go nice and slow. Fill it in. Make sure that his scales are all filled in. And be sure if you have drawn something that you're pretty excited about, please, please, please have your adult post it on um, the Facebook page in the comments. We would love to see your artwork. Oh, that'd make my art teacher heart, heart so happy to see your artwork. So um, be sure to do that. Adults, if you, if you want to do that, that would be great. We'd love to see it. Teachers, if you did this drawing with us, post yours. The students would love to see your work. So love you guys. I will post um, another grade level shortly. Thank you.